You might, you might think, well, what we're doing standing up here in our, in our jerseys, you know, maybe we were, just got lost on the way to the, the rugby. Um, I kind of wish I was there, but I also am really glad to be here too. And, and you know, the reason that, we love it, that we're here and the reason that we're wearing our jerseys is this, that we want to talk to you about the great need for the gospel in Wales. And we want to talk to you about that, not because we think that we've got a lot more to say than anybody else, but actually it was at an event not too dissimilar to this when we were about 15 or 16 that God asked us the question. And he said this, he said, would, would you give up your life to make Jesus famous again in Wales? And I guess we just want to talk about that um, for our 15 minutes uh, this evening. You've got to imagine the scene really. Um, when we were young, we had a great upbringing, we, we had a great church family, we had um, good family lives, we went to a good school, everything was in order. It was kind of like, you know, um, 10 pin bowling. You go to the bowling and you've got your 10 pins all lined up and they're all perfect. And I don't know whether you've ever had a moment when God has spoken to you, um, but sometimes when God speaks, it's a bit like the puny guy who has the ball that's too heavy for him and he throws it at the pins and it kind of bounces off the bumpers and trickles in the corner and kind of maybe just shakes one of the pins in the corner a little bit, but nothing changes. When we were 15 or 16 and God asked that question to us, it was like a really big guy with really big shoulders and a really big ball who took, his, who took the ball and threw it at our lives and all of the 10 pins in our lives that we thought were going in one direction just got obliterated all over the place and our life completely changed forever. And I guess the, we just want to ask the question to you guys tonight that God asked to us, believing that maybe some of you guys will get the same uh, stirrings that we had. Will you give your lives to make Jesus famous in Wales again. We've got three things really quickly for you uh, tonight that we just want to share. They're the things that, Je- that Jesus convinced us of when we were teenagers that we had to figure out, and they're the three things that really um, energize us, and we believe that this is the reason that we've got to share this question with you as well. So, low hit it off. Lush. So, we love Wales. I am passionately Welsh. I was born on St. David's Day. My favorite color is red. My favorite flower is a daffodil. So I'm kind of conforming to the whole Welsh patriotism thing. And I think that just as daffodils are a lush, vibrant, life-giving, joyful, happy, beautiful flower, Wales is a lush, vibrant, life-giving, joyful, beautiful nation. I think that the beauty of, of Wales, of our lush land, is, is summarized very much in a daffodil. Bit of a, bit of a tenuous link, but there we go, there's my daffodil. So the beauty of Wales is summed up in a daffodil. We've got beautiful um, rolling hills, we've got a wonderful heritage, we've got history, a stunning language, we've got um, beautiful cheese. I love our cheese, it's good. I love, our, like, even our sheep. What would Wales be without a sheep? They're important. We've got so much beautiful stuff to be thankful for, but for all that there is to love and to celebrate in our stunning nation, God showed us that actually the church in Wales is very much like a dying daffodil, just as the daffodil's deflated and is looking a bit floppy and pathetic now. The church in Wales, she's, let's be realistic, formerly beautiful. The church in Wales is on its last leg. She's, She's dying, effectively. There's the people just don't care about God in Wales anymore, and we need to stand up and, and say that that's not cool. So when Ben and I were 15 and 16, God started to break our hearts for this nation, um, and he asked us the question, would we give our lives to make him famous in this land once again? And one of the big things that, that God spoke to us through were some statistics. So I'm going to give you some stats about Wales and the the state of the church in our nation today. Did you know that only 2% of people in this land are born-again Christians? That's only 60,000 people. And numbers don't mean a lot to me unless I put them into perspective. So if you think, if any of you have been to the Millennium Stadium, that's less people than would fill the Millennium Stadium. They're professing to be born-again Christians in in our nation. And if you go to somewhere like the Valleys, and specifically the Ronda, where Ben and I are serving Jesus at the moment, less than half a percent of people go to church. And of those people, even less would be born-again Christians. There is a great need in our nation. Think about how big your church is. If you, if you go into church in Cardiff, the likelihood is that it's got more than 20 people in it, right? Actually, in Wales, the average congregation is just 20 people. 
for our nation as a whole. And those are just the statistics related to, to Christianity. I could tell you that in Wales, one in five under 20 year olds is living in poverty. And if you go to the valleys, that figure rises to a quarter of all under 20 year olds are living in poverty. There's statistics to do with drug abuse, domestic abuse, alcohol abuse, just domestic violence, teenage pregnancies. There's some of the highest rates in the whole of Europe. And that's in our beautiful land. Wales is in desperate need of the power of God. She needs to be transformed, needs to be saved. She needs to rise up out of the ashes. And God spoke to us and he said that it wasn't okay for our nation to be in this state. And thankfully, where the world rejects the broken and the impoverished, where the world leaves the hurting and the despairing, we serve a God who loves and he receives. And so that's the first point, that, that Wales is a nation in great need. And so if Wales is a, great, a nation in great need, I guess the question comes, is what hope does a nation like that have? Um, and I carry around with me sometimes when I come out to talk places and it sits on my bookshelf, I carry around a piece of coal. And the reason I carry around my piece of coal is that um, this stuff, at one point it was called black gold because it was so precious to people's lives. And it wasn't just that it could be sold, but it was that communities were built on coal. And, and people's lives were transformed by this stuff and it became the hope of a nation everybody's livelihoods, the, the thing that they put their trust in was that this stuff was under, un, under the ground and that somehow it could set them free and that people could find something that was worth living for in this stuff. And yet, of course, then when the coal industry collapsed, it, everybody realized that, that the coal wasn't the answer to all the problems. And I don't know whether you've realized recently, but as, as things are just a bit of a mess in the church and outside the church in Wales, and you hear all those statistics, you say, well... Loads of people have got loads of different answers to the problem. The politicians have got one answer. The educationists have got another answer. Everybody's looking to see how that they can fix all the problems. And I guess that um, one of the things that Jesus revealed to us when we were, were just teenagers and we were trying to figure this whole thing out was that the only hope is not coal or anything else. The only hope for Wales is the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the only thing that will fix all the problems in society and it's the only thing that, that people need in order to be restored into right relationship with the loving Father. And if we try and fix things in any other way other than through the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we're missing something. I just want to share one verse with you that I was thinking about yesterday. It comes in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says this. And this is a verse for, for, for ourselves, but it's a verse for Wales and the nations even. There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to people, and we must be saved by it. You see, one of the things why we're doing what we're doing, why we're living in Tonopandi, why we're trying to build this church and start a business and reach out to the lost, is this, that whatever everybody else says is the answer to all the problems in Tonopandi, we know that it's only the name of Jesus that's going to save that town. Amen. It's only the name of Jesus that's going to save all the other broken villages and towns and cities in, in Wales. It's only really the name of Jesus that gives anybody any hope whatsoever for their lives. And I guess that was the thing, not just need, but also that actually as Christians in Wales right now, even when the church is on its knees, we carry the hope of Jesus our wonderful Savior, who is the name who saves and rescues and builds up his wonderful church. And so we serve a cause that is worth putting our lives on the line for. Yeah? yeah. And so this rugby ball now, I'm sure some people might be keeping, keeping watch of the rugby on BBC Sport or whatever this afternoon. Now those rugby players, when five o'clock hits, they're going to be legging it out onto the pitch They've got loads of motivations. They want to keep all the supporters happy. They've got their own personal pride. They're going to hopefully destroy the Australians. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> and they, they're going to give 110%. They're going to put their bodies on the line to, to play sport for our nation and hopefully do us proud. But that cause that they think is worth fighting for, they base their diet, their, their time, where they live, they base so much around it that cause pales into insignificance next to the cause of serving Jesus in this nation. I'm going to read from Matthew 13, verse 44 to 46. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure 
buried in a field that a man found and reburied. Then in his joy, he goes and sells everything he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When he found just one priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. Guys, our cause is worth our lives. It's worth everything. The cause of serving the fame of Jesus in our nation is worth all that we can give. It's worth our lives. They give their whole lives for a sport. How much more worthy is the cause of eternity and serving the kingdom in this nation? It's got to be worth everything. And life is fleeting, but eternity lasts forever. Let's make it difficult to go to hell in Wales. Let's proclaim Jesus and let's snatch many souls from, from the clutches of Satan. Let's take our friends, our, our families, our co- work colleagues, our neighbors, people we meet in the streets. Let's, let's make it difficult to go to hell in Cardiff, in the valleys, in North Wales, East Wales, South Wales, West Wales. Let's make Jesus famous in this land once again. And so I guess what we want to close with is God works through people like you and me. When, when the Lord called Ben and I to, to serve in him in Wales, I was 15 and he was 16. That's younger than some of you here. That might be the same age as some of you here. But it's a cause that's worth our lives. There are a lot of broken and hurting people in this land for whom Jesus is the only hope. It says in Luke 10 verse 2, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest Ask him to send more workers into his fields. He can use people like you and people like me. We so often feel like we have nothing to offer, really. But we have a great savior, a wonderful cause to be serving. He's the only hope. And so we're praying to the Lord of of the harvest, the Lord who's in charge of the harvest, to send some of you to work in his fields in this beautiful land, to serve the greatest cause and to serve his kingdom here. Excellent. (laughs) Cuban. So the the question that the Lord asked us, will you give your life for the fame of Jesus in Wales so that Jesus could be famous in Wales again is simply the question we want to leave you with. If you want to respond to that, it might not look like church planning in Tonopandi. It probably won't, to be honest, because we're there doing that. So you can go somewhere else and do something different. <laughs> but, There's a lot of places that don't have a church. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want to respond to that in any way, then do, do come and grab us. Um, and let's be an army that, that takes the cause of Christ to the nation again and believes that many lives will be changed, many churches will be planted, and, mm-hmm. and the name of Jesus would resound again like it once resounded 100 years ago throughout this nation in a wonderful, wonderful way. It's great. Thanks, guys.